Hi, I'm Nikki Shepherd, and I'm a Proposition Manager for Vodafone Global Enterprise. I'm joined here today by Cam Buchanan. Cam is an ethical hacker and he's a principal consultant in penetration testing with one of our partners, BAE Systems Applied Intelligence. Cam, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. So I'm sure our audience will be very keen to understand how did you actually get into the cybersecurity space? So it's interesting actually. Um, after joining the military, I was made redundant after two years due to a cut in spending. Mm -hmm. And I was given the opportunity to spend uh, a year working with a big four company. Right. Um, whilst I was working there, I started working in cybersecurity, uh, specifically in penetration testing. Um, and I think I've done well in this position because it's given me a chance to take some specific parts of my military training, mainly that adversarial attitude and, and how to deal with threats uh, into a new environment uh, and put in some new skills. Okay. So for some members of our audience who may not um, understand what penetration testing is, could you explain to us exactly what that is? Sure. So um, penetration testing is basically um, taking on the role of an attacker for an organization. So organizations contact us and ask us to test their perimeter or their systems, their infrastructure, web applications, mobile devices, that kind of thing. Um, and we take a broad range of tools and basically assess the vulnerabilities and try and exploit them. And at the end of that, we tell them how we exploited them and how to fix them. Okay. So um, what sort of things are you, are you testing? Um, so in a, in a normal test, we sort of let's say a web application test, mm -hmm. we'll look at how the application has been coded incorrectly or vulnerabilities at present. So, I mean, there's some big name things that everyone knows about, SQL injection and cross-site scripting. They're kind of like, they're the things you read about in the news when, um, when a hacker group has got into a database or something like that. They've, they've done it through a big name attack. Okay. So those are general flaws that you find in web applications. Uh, in infrastructure, we see look for um, services that have been incorrectly enabled, software that shouldn't be there, out of date software, that kind of thing. Um, and then um, mobile devices, it's generally speaking overprivileged or under secured devices. Um, and we do a lot of testing around those. So when you um, start a project, um, do you know um, before you start the sort of things that you're going to be looking for? It's interesting. Um, dependent on what we're going to do, yes. Like we sit down with the client to work out the sort of original scoping thing and, and you know, with this kind of like sales activity. And when we talk to them, it's often that the, the client tells us things that are going to be vulnerable without actually realizing. They, they tell us things like, you know, oh, it's a legacy system, but, you know, it's secure. And that's, it just doesn't make sense to us. You know, we, we know that that's going to be a source of vulnerabilities. We know it's going to be a, a way in. At least we hope it's going to be a way in. Um, not all legacy systems are broken, but the majority of them uh, definitely have their flaws. Okay. It's interesting that you mentioned um, sort of mobile workforce and mobile devices. What sort of impact do you think they've had on... Um, uh, security and the cyber security attacks that are happening. The advent of mobile devices and the implementation of mobile working forces and working from home and remote working has opened up a large amount of vulnerabilities to attackers. Um, when traditionally you would have had everybody working in one location, your network would have been locked down and you just need you know, access to everything else on that network in that location. And now it's that location has to be available from anywhere in the world. And obviously you can, you can see how that might give an opening to an attacker. Um, and it, a lot of people think you know, it's a simple solution, it's elegant, that kind of thing, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's secure. Uh, and a lot of people don't invest in, in VPNs and just go, you know, we have a website, why would we need a, another way in? You know, I can log on to my webmail straight away. I don't, need a, I don't need a VPN, I don't need access to all those kind of things in a secure way. Okay. Um, <coughs> and can you um, tell us about the, you know, the, the type of companies that you actually work for on a daily basis? Uh, I can't tell you specifically. I can be a bit vague about it. You know, we work in all sectors. Um, we work with all kinds of devices, so you know, it can be simple things like, as I've said, networks and uh, web applications and mobile phones, mobile devices, that kind of thing. Um, but we also go you know, way off kilter um, and test things uh, such as uh, battleships, ATMs, uh, banks, jewelry stores. Uh, as part of the, the Crest organization, we have a, a wide sort of um, breadth of tests. So as an ethical hacker, you're obviously employed by organizations to break into their systems, you know, hacking into their IT infrastructure and also challenging perhaps their mobility strategy. What sort of things do you focus on? I guess we take a, like a wide approach to it, trying to focus on one specific area. Uh, the danger is to become too specialized and go, you know, oh, I want to focus on this specific vulnerability. I know there's something here and you're going to miss things. 
and it's, it's more useful for an organization to, to have that sort of uh, breadth of knowledge of their vulnerabilities rather than going, oh yeah, we have this one one that we found, it leaked you know, one bit of information and we've now you know, compromised something. That, that's not that useful to them. You say, oh, there is a leak there, but you know, it could lead into something. You should probably look at that and leave it with that. And do you find um, some organizations that you've worked with rely too heavily on perhaps elements of software that they may have introduced into their infrastructure? Definitely, there is, there is that um, sort of uh, blinkered vision kind of thing. I have this security product, it does Y, it does X, and therefore I'm safe. And, and that is, is the wrong way to look at it. It should be sort of like, you know, these are my vulnerabilities, how do I solve them? Not this is how I'm safe, I'll ignore the rest. Yeah, so making sure they look at their whole IT infrastructure yeah. and, imp and specifically their enterprise mobility strategy to make sure they're not leaving any holes or anything Correct, yeah. vulnerable. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd like to move on now to the topic of BYOD, bring your own device. Obviously sure. a hot topic um, in the um, security space at the moment. And with 51% um, you know, of 21 to 32 year old employees um, prepared to obviously bring their own devices to work and, uh, and, and also contravene company policies when it comes to how they would use that device in work, how do you think that's really impacting some of you know, cyber security today? I think um, smaller organizations have been doing BYD for quite a long time and uh, now larger organization, organizations are looking at it and going this is this is the way we should do things you know, from a cost perspective it's effective and they go oh hang on a second there's all those security concerns and that's that's the way the decision making often goes you know cost first security later yeah. um, but I think it is taking off in a big way because it the the whole um, sort of uh, dual persona kind of application approach where you have you know a business persona and a a um, private persona on the same device through various different solutions and that kind of thing works quite well. You can lock off and secure those business functions and keep it away from the personal functions. But there's still a lot of work to be done around there before I'd say you know it's 100% you know certain that those, that's safe. On that note, though, um, on the on the statistic there, um, <clears throat> I think if, if you know 50 51 percent of your employees or 51 percent of that age group are willing to circumvent specific policies then it's it's more of a policy review question rather than a how do we stop them doing that it's more of like well, why are they doing that and is there a reason we should sort of adapt our policies to fit them because the the younger workforce um, have a different approach to things than, than sort of your traditional workforce and you look at it sort of like oh we, we're blocking facebook um, a lot of people use facebook as a primary means of communication mm -hmm. and it would be it would be sensible to look at why you're blocking that in the first place and say, oh, it's because they spend a lot of time there. It's like, yes, but are they now spending more time trying to get around that block to spend time on Facebook? So, so obviously what you're really saying is, is making sure an organization is aware of employee attitudes and how they go about their daily work activity, um, yeah. as well as some of the potential security issues that may be prevalent in some BYOD strategies. Yes. Okay. Um, and what about cloud? Another hot topic when it comes <laughs> to the discussion of security. Um, what's your opinion on how secure cloud is? Um, so the cloud to us is a sort of security individuals is a bit of a, a bit of buzzword and really it just means off-site data storage. Uh, and it does get used by corporations now um, and it's just really sort of offshoring a bit of risk to, to somewhere else, to someone else uh, and you accredit them and that's fine. Um, but as cloud storage gets used by individuals uh, more often, you know, it's introducing more security risks as people use it from your internal network to send stuff to their home network and, and that kind of thing. I know we touched on um, the impact of the mobile workforce um, before, um, but how key is it, do you think, for an organization to really understand and have visibility of the devices that are connected to their network at any one time? Uh, it's it's um, possibly one of the most important things. You need to you can't defend something, you can't prepare something for attack or, or, or work out how to make something efficient if you don't know what it is. It, you need to know, you know what's, on, what's in your network, how it's being used and, and how people would like it to be used before you can actually work out a decent security product. Okay, that makes sense. So how would you recommend an organization implement an effective enterprise mobility management strategy? And to reiterate on the point um, from my previous answer, it's about getting everybody involved. It's about listening to what needs to be done and how it needs to be used and how people want to use it. And it's not a case of you know going, oh well, our CISO and our um, sort of security officers and the people who do security need to sit down in a big meeting and, and have a you know, powwow about it. It needs to be everybody. It needs to be your finance guys. Need to know what what they think is important. You need to speak to the the marketing people about what they think is important. Recruitment, mm -hmm. um, maintenance. You know, you need to go across every every single of your organization and work out how they want to use this solution and, and where they think the current errors are. 
And by doing that, you can you get like a holistic view of the the organization. You can start to go, okay, we you know some of these things aren't feasible. You know, we can't make something that's one hundred percent fast and one hundred percent secure. But maybe we can see why people are now going. You know, we didn't use the old solution because it was clunky, or we didn't use the old solution because it had a, a max file limit. And we can work a ways around that. Whereas, you know, if you sit down and you go, this is a this is our solution. Now everybody must fit it. Mm -hmm. Then you know you're setting setting yourself up for a fall there. You talked a lot there about um, sort of really understanding the different business processes and how individuals, doesn't matter what team or what department they're in, have to work together in, in their you know, typical day-to-day um, -day activity. Yep. Um, and that seems to be key, and you've mentioned that a couple of times um, today, um, that it's not just driven from sort of IT departments, but it's looking at all the different businesses, uh, sort of business processes within an organization. Yes. Do you think that's key in your experience? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's key. You know, communication is the the number one way that people sort of break down and fail and implementing security strategies and they just the people implementing don't understand what it's going to be used for and, and how the company actually operates and I think very few people in most organizations do actually understand how the organization operates as a whole. Okay well that's been great Cam thank you so much for your time today and for that fantastic insight into the day in the life of an ethical hacker and also some great I think top tips for any organization with a mobile workforce and some of the security solutions they should consider to make sure um, their devices, their employees' personal data, and also their corporate data is safe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hopefully you've um, had some great tips today from, um, from our expert here, Cam. For more information about how Vodafone security solutions can help mitigate your cybersecurity risks, please go to www.enterprise.vodafone.com forward slash security. Thank you.